Take a second and think about every muscle that you are utilizing right at this moment. Even as you are sitting, your back, neck, and core muscles are holding up your posture. As you breathe in and out and digest your lunch, muscles are essential in those processes. This is why neuromuscular degenerative disorders are so devastating. Amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, also known as ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease, is one such disorder. It destroys nerve cells, which then can no longer innervate muscles, resulting in muscular death. Eventually, those muscles that are essential for life will die. On average, a patient diagnosed with ALS will die two to five years after that diagnosis. While there are resources to help ALS patients have the best functioning life, there are no drugs available that will significantly increase a patient's lifespan. With events like the Ice Bucket Challenge, a lot of focus and money has been put into finding a cure to ALS. So how do we find that cure? The first step is gaining a better understanding of the cause and development of the disease. And we are getting closer to doing this. In the Grows Lab, we are focusing on an important characteristic of the disease that many scientists believe may be key to finding a cure to ALS. It is the formation of something called stress granules. Stress is a highly triggering word. While stress granules are unrelated to the kind of stress that you may experience on a day-to-day -day basis, they are analogous. Just as stress is a normal and healthy response to dangerous or unhealthy situations, stress granules are a normal cellular response to situations that a cell deems as dangerous. Normally, after the stress response is over, the cell will get rid of the stress granules and return to normal processes. But when the stress granules start to accumulate, even in non-stressful situations, and become pathological, this causes disease. Imagine if stress granules start to accumulate in the spinal cord and in the nerve cells. This will make it extremely difficult for those nerve cells to innervate muscles for movement. It is hypothesized that these stress granules are causal in motor neuron death and therefore an important target for ALS treatment. So how do we use this knowledge to find a cure for ALS? I am studying the various proteins that are involved in the formation of stress granules. By targeting these proteins, we can stop the formation of stress granules when their development has become pathological. One well-known protein in ALS research is ataxin-2. It is one of those proteins that is instrumental in the development of stress granules. Research has already shown that by targeting ataxin-2, we may be able to significantly extend the life of someone with ALS. In the GROWS lab, we've discovered that the protein PAS kinase is regulating ataxin-2, and we are hopeful that by targeting PAS kinase, we can significantly help ALS patients. There are several other proteins involved in this process, and as we learn their roles in both stress granule formation and ALS development, we hope that we can find a cure that those with ALS so desperately need.